we're going to do some things after that. I hope it's true because we got some sisters here I saw in life and they no chance we're going to hook up in life. So I hope I do have a chance after that. <laughs> you won't give up, eh? <laughs> they won't give up. <laughs> well, uh, it's better since we're here for festivities. Uh, the festivities would include everything. We are going to have the luxury, uh, and it's a luxury to hear from our elder teacher, uh, a few days older than I am, uh, Dr. Jan Henry Clark, uh, one of these days, not too long, before he would take a, uh, a highlight and speak to us in a question and answer period. Uh, he will speak in his own inevitable way. We will listen and we would ask a few questions, of course. And of course, some of us will have a comment. We have uh, uh, doctors, including Dr. Lewis there, who's a specialist in his field, will speak to us. And Dr. Mary Bridges, a very young and vivacious looking little uh, psychiatrist, so will psychoanalyze me. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> I always get trapped up with fine looking sisters. I always have this. What's that? I said a deleterious effect <laughs> on my mind. <laughs> you know how you sisters are. I, I yeah. look around tell and I that. always try to uh, tell people when they say, are you polygamous? Do you believe in more than one wife? And I, I want to lie and say, no. <laughs> I'm a monogamous. One woman, one man. <laughs> at a time. That's right. That's right. That's right. <laughs> and, uh, and even then, when I look at the sisters, you know, you sisters should be ashamed of yourself. Now, how do you expect one man to have one woman? When we look at you, <laughs> you know, I believe that black men should marry black women just by trying to set the numbers. And then whatever comes down to one. Because if you got to look at the sister to make the decision, how the hell can you do it? How are you going to look at this? But are you going to start, man? How do you, how do you do a thing like that? I take one to you. How do you, how do you marry one girl? I know, I I know Sister Monroe upset you, but how in the world do you do it? I mean, you got to be plumb up with that sister. I got nothing. Uh, <laughs> nice hazel eye. What's that? Oh, God. It's one of the most money. It's a damn shame a man got to die so young. <laughs> <laughs> but we're in the festival. We That's a part of what we're here to celebrate. Yeah. We're celebrating our women. Yes, I mean, yes, you, you know, yes, sister, uh, we, we got to tell you, all of us, we are frustrated all the time. <laughs> Most of the time, it's because we crave about you. And then, because, you see, she's sticking up her head back, right back behind that poster. That's the name. Sister, see this. Brother John has got a little problem with his sight. A great problem. Can't see. A sister comes right up and says, don't worry about it. I'll take care of you. I'll, I'll take care of you. Carry it there. She's sitting up back there, right up behind the tree. You know, look good. <laughs> behind the tree. That look good. That's what we call season and sweet. That's pee wee, sweet pea. You want to know this? Now there's sweet peas back there shaking her hand. <laughs> we have two sisters. One is sweet pea with us, and then one calls pea sweet. <laughs> so now that we've got ourselves balanced and ready for the lecture of the day, uh, I'm sure that you have heard much and many comments about the tour you had this morning. I, to my understanding, while you were away, we were making decisions as for the evening and for other times, of course. It's my understanding that you visited today the temple of Mendelusi. I like to call them by the Egyptian or Nubian names first and then explain the other names that Europeans have given them. In the case of the temple of Mendelusi on the island of Kolobwayo, Mendelusi is the Nubian name for the older brother of Asaru or Asar, which the Europeans equal call Osiris. And Kolobwaya 
is the name, the Nubian name, K-O-L-O, Kolo, Boyo, next word, B-O-Y-O, is the Nubian name of the island on which this temple is. The Germans call the island Kalabsha, K-A-L-A-B-S-H-A, and they call the god Mendus, M-E-N-D-L, M-E-N-D-U-L-I-S, Mendus. In the second one, the larger of the two, of course, it is Miss Norma Philae, the island of love, the Greek word, P-H-I-L-A-E, Philae Island, uh, which is in fact Ajilka Island, the Nubian word, A-G-I-L-K-A, Ajilka. But in reality, Ajilka would have been the one that's now surrounded by Kazin, and instead it's the Wolf Island that they've used to replace the one that uh, submerged by a virtue of uh, the building of the Aswan Dam, Nuhai Dam, which created a lake called Lake Nasa, which runs from the point where it is at the sixth and last cataract. Uh, by the way, let me straighten that out a little because you know it as the first cataract. Most of the things are numbered according to the Greeks or the Romans or anybody else when they came. Uh, the Africans numbered them one, two, three, four from the source, the source of the Nile, whereas the Europeans, namely the Greeks, number them as they met them coming from the destination where they came in Europe. And this lake is as large as extending 35 miles into Sudan, which was originally Tanahisi, T-A apostrophe N-E-H-I-S-I. -E so what I'm going to do is to give you the historics, the uh, going back into the pre-dynastic period, the dynastic and the post-dynastic to a period of time, no more than 1,000 subsequent to the common era. In so doing, it, I will make analysis with other texts of which you are more familiar, for example. When I speak about Mendelus, the older brother of Osiris, it may be necessary at time for me to refer to Asaru Osiris, and in referring to Asaru Osiris, have to give you some qualities of that particular god or his twin sisters, one of whom he married, Aset or Ast, which will you, you call Isis, the second of which is Never Odeptis, uh, and being twin sisters, and one, of course, as being his wife. So then, in order for me to deal with that, I will <coughs> equally have to, at times, refer to certain special qualities about them, in the case of Os uh, uh, Isis, Isis herself. I cannot refer to her in any sense of reality unless I equally speak of her as the first woman on record to have given birth to an immaculately conceived child. For most of you, you might have thought that it was her sister, Mary, 4,100 years later. Because your frame of reference is only Mary, and particularly from the book of Matthew, not even the book of Luke that preceded Matthew before the Nicene Conference. In speaking about that, I would equally then have to speak of the Immaculate Conception by virtue of the papyrus you have in, on your, in, your, in your personal, or at least in your control, though you may not have it at this present time with you. That would bring us to another position because if I did mention to you of this pregnancy, this Immaculate Conception, 
I will also have to tell you about the termination of that pregnancy, what happened to this immaculate conception, and therefore that will bring me into the virgin birth of her son. If she's immaculately conceived, uh, what, did she lose her virginity, and what do we mean by this story? Are we speaking philosophically, are we speaking theosophically, or physically? Then I will have to explain to you what was meant by the Immaculate Conception, and if it's possible that any of you mothers here was equally conceived immaculately and gave birth to your child, so that you could have a point of reference. Many of us go into the church, particularly mothers, that have, many, many brothers have been trying to be mothers, but I'm talking about the real thing. Uh, who, those who have done it, and, 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 and that, I mean sisters, who have become mothers. Uh, I, I really would like to see the brother have succeeded, but I haven't heard any rumors lately. So you see what is being happened. You've just gone to two temples, but already you're asking questions in which it relates to you. First let me clarify the term immaculate conception and to see to what extent any of you sisters fit into this because you may feel that you're outside of this classification. The ancient Egyptians and Nubians, by the way, if I said the ancient Egyptian, 10 to 1, it includes the ancient Ethiopian, the ancient uh, Sudanese, the ancient uh, Ugandan, and the ancient uh, people from Kenya and Somalia, and northern Tanganyika. Why do I say that? Because the ancient nation of Penwet, P-E-N-W-E-T, otherwise called Puanit, P-U-A-N-I-T, which the Hebrews in their allegorical story and the mythology dealing with the, uh, the flood and uh, uh, Noah and his boat and Ham and, and so forth, Jephthah and so forth, they then call it Punt, and that's the way you know it. You don't know it was a, a true previous name long before they were even the first Jew, long before there was a concept of a God named Jehovah. So I have to use the Immaculate Conception in some explanation which you may be able to relate to, particularly African mothers, Nubian mothers. The ancient Egyptians said, in speaking about this, that the immaculate conception of Isis was caused because Isis knew for whom she was pregnant. The immaculacy of the thing is that since Isis was going with Tom, Dick, and Harry, Jones included, and any other fellow you want included, I don't want to let me leave Mr. Bogle out for this, but that's the thing. <laughs> In other words, when she missed her physical period and told Asaru, uh, Osiris, I am pregnant for you, she knew it couldn't be anyone else, regardless of who told Asaru, that baby ain't yours, man. You know what I mean? She got, could get back and say, I damn any man to come in front of me here and tell me that is your child. She knew because there was no one else, including a male mosquito, <laughs> <laughs> who been there. You understand? So the ancient Egyptians said, thus she had an immaculate conception. It was immaculate because there was no way in the world, in her mind, it could be anybody else. If she had anything else messing with her, including a little finger, she couldn't say it was immaculate, but she knew it was only Osiris messing around with her, but in another area. So she had an immaculate conception. It had nothing to do, nothing to do whether she had a hymen, because the virgin birth has nothing to do, the word virgo from the Greek word means to be clean, it has nothing to do with a little hymen, a little a piece of membrane stretching over a little hole that got ruptured. Okay, we got to deal with it and get down to it and understand. That was the original concept until 219 frustrated men got at Nicaea, uh, a place called Nicaea, and decided that the hymen and Virgo mean the same thing. 
and thus spoke of the Mary situation with Joseph as a kind of a, uh, of a stepfather or surrogate father whom God would give this baby. Unfortunately, most of all of you are not going to go to a place called Abydos and Dendera where you would see the Immaculate Conception. That's why it became important that you would buy a papyrus in, and seen one of the scenes or two of the scenes in those temples. So this, these will substitute for you. It never does it good enough, but when you're not going to a place, it does at least give you some sort of a, uh, a feeling of what you would have seen had you gone to Abidas and Tender. But since, for, for many of you, this is only going to be your first. I'm, not, I'm going to see you umpteen times here because you, you just get it at your, at your foot. Uh, you touch a toe in the water, and they said, once you sit of Egypt, the waters of Egypt, you will always come back to sip again. Mm -hmm. I see people here who knew the first time they come out that this is it. I came to have a little nice vacation, but it's the third, fourth, fifth time they're here still sipping at Egypt. Well, let us make it more specific as we have the temple that we've just seen yesterday or today. And we could identify. We are talking about these two, that temple is particularly, I, I was right when I start the lecture with a praise to the African sister and, uh, and, and give you some background and spoke of the beauty of the African woman. This isn't perfect, popping it isn't telling a lie. Uh, it is because of her beauty, but not only her physical beauty, but the beauty of her loyalty. That's what the temple is talking about. The temple of love, Phila Temple. A, an African woman in the form of a goddess. Her loyalty to a man, such that the story, he is killed one time by a jealous, ruthless brother, the bad God, said Typhon. You would call him Satan. What's the difference? About Satan is the bad God. But you can't use the name God because you only use God to Jesus. But the fact is a bad God. Let's take the fact of Satan. Satan is so bad, he got more followers than Jesus. <laughs> Jesus is begging for followers. <laughs> Satan got them. He chasing some out. <laughs> <laughs> he got followers. <laughs> Over the door in the house. When, 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 when Satan got a, a revival meeting, <laughs> some of the people from Jesus try to get in. <laughs> It's so big. Well, this 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 <laughs> brother, uh, said Typhon, killed the good God. And he killed the good God is Isis, I will use the term you most familiar with, husband. Hanging. She goes all the way to Iraq. You think that uh, you you hear of a Middle East and thing, and you feel it got nothing to do with you the story. But she goes all the way to Iraq to bring back her dead husband. So carry the God of the dead, Anubis, Ampu is her correct name, to help her bring this brother back together so that God rock, the God of all God. Remember, they know Jehovah yet. Nobody knows here, but no more Jehovah yet. Ain't no Jesus no more yet. <coughs> Nobody ever mentioned the word Tell it. Allah yet. We talk about rock. And then later, Amun Ra. You see me? They're bad brothers. And then don't, don't forget, those, these, these brothers got sisters with them. That's yeah. what, I, what I like about the Egyptian Nubian others, God, God always got an old lady <laughs> with him. God can't be lonely because God said, let us make man and look to a sister. <laughs> sister God. They call him goddess. And she, yes, lady. <laughs> you remember, God is speaking the language of the people, the language of the people. And she said, yeah, baby, that's whip it to each other. <laughs> you know what I mean? Jay yes. seen her wrong yet, you know. <laughs> so let us make man as a possibility. Speaking to his woman, let us make man. She said, come, let's whip it on. But, all right, we're going on. <laughs> so you hear, here we are, the sister is crying to ask God rock. Don't let him forever stay dead. Resurrect him so that we could have some good gods to follow 
so that when this bad God and his bad children continue, the world will be saved, balanced, everything will be okay. She did, and he got back, but his evil brother heard that he's again alive. And comes around, like all oh, bad fellow, and gonna kill him the second time. This is the one that, that gonna cause the trouble. So this time he said, look, I wouldn't only kill him, but I'm gonna cut him up in 14 pieces, and I'm gonna scatter the, his body around the world. So he cut him up, cut him, cut him up, cut up in 14 pieces, throw pieces all different ways, and one piece, especially, she throw it, he throws in the knife. And the Nile catfish ate. Now, let us see epistemology. The Nile catfish ate. <laughs> Why is it that men refer to a woman or cat? Why Nubians don't eat catfish to this day? <laughs> because they relate the story to a female. The night that symbolically the Nile catfish ate it. And thus, and thus Isis, is that for the blood? I'm all right. Uh, he heard about the catfish and he fell off. <laughs> <laughs> So she decided to build or to have an obelisk. You've been to the site of an obelisk. See how they dig it out of the stone. Done by you. You're the only person that did obelisk. Only in Aswan. Only Nubians made obelisk. She comes to the Nubian brothers. Bring me, make me something to symbolize the penis of your brother. Cyrus. And they make what? A very long stand at which a pyramid will stay. A long stem with a pyramid on the top, symbolizing Osiris. But we were in the Washington, D.C. You've gone there to see the home of your forefathers. <laughs> <laughs> and you saw a large penis made for George Washington. Martha didn't think he, he had anything much to lose. She didn't miss none. <laughs> and you didn't relate it to this because our frame of reference did not relate to anything in Egypt. Yes, Ghana, yes. Congo, yes. Uh, Nigeria, yes. Because they told us, well, you all people come from there, nowhere else. And so we didn't, we didn't relate to this until we went to Central Park and we saw that, but instead of speaking about it, we said it's Cleopatra's needle. Mm -hmm. See what I mean? But even when we said that, it didn't, re it didn't register to us, needle or not, that it's ours. That it was made in Nubia, where you are, down the street, across the street, West Bank, East Bank, doesn't matter, right down here, in Soulville. And so the sister goes back with Anubis, they continue, they put the body back, and now she appeals to God Ra again. Look, Ra, I know I'm coming back to you the second time, but you know, the brother needs to pass on a good God because only wickedness and we must have from you. And imagine God Ra said, take it easy, sister. I'm going to do it. You're a righteous sister. You don't know. And God Ra give back. Osiris is fetus and resurrected the penis from the dead to life. First resurrection. And thus, since you've gone to Abydos and Dendera, you have the picture which you will see of the resurrection of Osiris 
from the dead to a proper, from the dead level to a perpendicular. Brothers, those of you of the craft, uh, you have heard it from the Europeans. I don't care if you call yourself King Solomon, Prince Hall, or who. You've got to go back home to get it all. Those of you who are going to Waset, where they call Thebes, where they now call Luxa, when you go to the temple in there, you will see that when you got here enough, you got to come home. Well, here is the sister going to the brother and asked, Brother God, the biggest power, right. symbolic of God, the sun. Why did the ancient Africans use the sun? Because you can't see it. You, what you see there is not the sun. You see a reflection of what is the sun. You never see it. You can't see it. You can't feel it. Therefore, how can you identify it? How you know that God is a man? He, him. Why not she? Last time you went down behind the fence, uh, in, the, in the factory, in the taxi cab, and something gave him birth, you ain't seen no he. Not even give him what to do to him to a plane. Keep him bigger noise if the dude is a little stiff. And then you don't connect him with birth. You prefer to deal with Adam and Steve. <laughs> <laughs> rather than Adam and Eve. Because you got it so that Steve is getting the baby to his rib cage. <laughs> you don't deal with the vagina because you know vaginas are dirty. And uh, even when you're married, you hide and go in, in the, uh, underneath the sheet in the bed to pull off your panties because your husband can't see you. Why? Because vaginas are dirty things, ugly. Nasty, not to be spoken about. We know that. The male is just as bad. I mean, that dirty thing is our mother and father. We don't talk about that. We don't deal with that. Right? We don't even want to talk about it. Let's do it a little bit. I'm not have some children, but don't let us ever talk about it. God, that's a dirty mouth man. Because I say I love sex. You're supposed to love it. I don't love sex as a matter of fact, I love sex. <laughs> now you know he's a dirty professor and saying a thing like this, obviously somebody must love you go one time, two times, three times, and five babies, six babies, sorry baby. But anyhow, let's start with it. We are talking about a people, and when you see God men, you're going to see God men. The God of fertility shown with all his clothes on, with his penis sticking out at all times you see him. And everywhere you will see him. And when you go to the Karnak temple, you're going to see him by the hundreds of times on every column. Then you will see. For those of you who will go to on, you will go on to the Valley of the King and over the, 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 the bear, over the, the sarcophagus. Where the Pharaoh be lying, you see Goddess Nut, naked as she was born, with moons and the sun and the stars and, and, and everything painted on her body, back to back, naked, over the Pharaoh's face. That when he lie down in, in the next world, all he do is looking up to the Goddess Nut. In other words, he's looking to heaven. And yet you think, you think that heaven is up there behind the clouds? You got heaven sitting right next to you? Heaven gave him birth to you in the hospital. You laying down at heaven in the night, uh, in the daytime too. <laughs> if you got any sense in the early morning, uh, that's some of the best times anyhow. And then you, you, got, you got heaven that's dealing with, but you can't recognize it because you just put your foot in, he in heaven and said, bitch, get your black ass out here or bring your black ass here. Huh? And you got heaven dealing with it. But you can't, you don't know it because the frame of reference you've got is to say, bitch, get this and that. As a matter of fact, I just the other day on the subway, hear a young brother calling a young sister, hey, bitch, come here. I said, what do you want, baby? And I asked the other sister, would you let a man call you bitch? I said, why not? I'm, I'm his bitch. I couldn't believe it that young ladies are today saying, to a man, yeah, baby, I'm your bitch. <laughs> I wonder what happened to the English.
understand which they mean to die much for me, but at least I use it sometime. That these brothers and sisters don't know that a bitch is a female dog. Not that the, the, the dog is, is so bad, uh, but they don't need to call my woman a bitch. Because my woman, near my mama, is a bitch. And I'd be furious that, that they used to be killing words when I was growing up mm -hmm. to talk about my mama as a bitch. Mm -hmm. You understand what I mean? You was a, my mother's a bitch, and you look for the funeral. Boy, bitch, uh, father, boy, you, you will be bitch out of this world. <laughs> no, but, a, but these young brothers didn't know. They didn't see what you see. They didn't see that temple that, that you saw today with that sister there, uh, uh, Isis, with another sister, Hathor, as you ask why African women put so much time in caring, eating, even the woman that mistreated her, Miss, Miss What's Her Name, in the house, she takes Miss What's Her Name child to her house and treat that child with a, 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 a distinct care as a surrogate mother. Her thought is doing it. But no, you can't recognize it because in your Bible, they said her thought is a golden calf. And so you learn from the beginning to hate yourself. That's why when you go to Amber Symbol tomorrow, or the day after, when you go to have a symbol, you're going to see goddess Hathor. Not only goddess Hathor, you're going to see goddess Hathor symbolic of an African woman like you, looking like you, by the name of Nefertari II. And then you will see as a cow. Just as a cow, you see the woman with cow ears, an African sister with cow ears, Hathor. In your Bible, you read, you read of her as the golden calf. And they tell you that Abraham and his people used to worship the golden calf. It, it, why didn't they tell you she used to worship an African goddess? But that the Indians calling themselves Hindu still worship after being carried there by a group of people they now call Javidians. You see? You see why I thought that it was enough to bring people here to learn to identify, but it's time to celebrate. It's not enough to come and see and go back, though it couldn't be enough, but we need to celebrate. When you go to Mecca, you go to celebrate Muhammad and others. When you go to Bethlehem, you go to celebrate different people, Michelangelo, other, other people, Pantheus and Bortheus. When you go to, to Jerusalem, you go to celebrate the wall of the morning, the morning wall and so forth. But why not when you come here to celebrate Goddess Hatha that preceded all of them, that gave heaven to Jehovah and his people when they needed heaven, heaven? Why can't we celebrate our own concept of theosophy? No, we have to because the symbols when other people carry and say, we believe so and so was here, and this statue was here, and this building was here, we don't have to carry you and tell you we believe nothing was here. We carry and say, here is goddamn building, we know it's here. I know that last phrase, goddamn building, upset you with the pain of referring language according to the Pope. <laughs> the intellectually wealthy and rich use the pain language. The poor, stupid, like me, use the profane language. But God damn it, that's profane. You understand what I said? The, the goddamn root. I could say what, you want to hear it? Go ahead. That's right. But ain't changed the truth. If we get out some of the profane and failing thing and deal with an issue, then some of us will know where uh, our children are. See? Some of us will go back and tell the sister, well, look now, baby, you and I can't get along. I, want, I don't want no more of that thing you got, good as it is. But that's my child. You know? It may not be, but you name it for the child, damn it, it's mine. I want to see my child. You don't tell me I can't see my child. Otherwise, the house don't blow up. You understand? I paid too much investment. You think I'm going to give my child, any woman keep my child and I can't, I'm going to give her the privilege of having my child all to herself? No way. You're going to share it. It's mine. You said it's mine. Even if it ain't, it is mine. Now let's share it. What I'm going to take the damn child and go. You don't have no child left. 
And yet we see more than 3,000 years before an African man carved out of the stone two temples, one for his most favorite wife, Nefertari. And then we talking about the curriculum of inclusion. Are we going to include this? Or are we going to let somebody compromise this away from us? And we settle for something else? Or are we going to say, this or nothing at all? Take a stand. So what we are talking about here in terms of these temples and in the case of Ben Lucent, we go up, I'm skipping because of time factor, of course. Uh, we go up there, we walk up, it seems as if the old cliche, if it's worth having, it's worth sacrificing. We walk up that to that temple, climbing quite a while. If it's low tide and the water recess. We go up to the temple of Mendus, the Nubian god or you know it's, it's strange that all God seems to have a brother or some member of the family that's missing for a while and just crops up there. James the lesser Jesus older brother. Jesus is older brother. Hmm. Bishop of Caliandros was like Mendelus, just cropped up. Hmm. After we hear about Osiris and his other brother, Setai. But in this temple of the Nubians, and like us, like us in the West, we don't speak of any of our ancient other gods. We speak of Jesus, Jehovah, and nowadays Allah. But none of us speak of Olodumare, None of us call it an olorum. None of us call it budum. As a matter of fact, we say budum, people start laughing and start with chicken, like chicken head and chicken toes and all kinds of that. None at all at all over here. If you talk of uncle, uncle, hee hee hee, that sounds so funny. Talking about God of South Africa. No, we only know Jesus sounds good, Jehovah sounds good, Allah sounds good. Because European told us it's good, Asian told us it's good, thus it's good. But when we tell ourselves one is good, that God Chiku is good, Ngai from Kenya is good, we can't deal with that. We can't deal with it because our frame of reference we've been conditioned to think in one way. Because we didn't know this. Remember, until I reach the 1,000, before the common era, I cannot speak of Greek, Greece or Rome. There is no Roman. Even if you call him an Etruscan, there is no Greek. Even if you call him a man of Paris. But this already, by that time, is in its decline and decay. This society is already so old that it's decaying when you mention modern Greece. The birth of Greece does not exist when this society is already dying. And yet we talk about, I'm a member of the Bapa, Lapa, Epa, Ipsilon, Teach. Oh yeah. <laughs> Man, the, the night when you see the bacillus and you see the papalillus and all of them, boy, and you came come out with drip, drip, drip down, dressed up with a flight fly coat, you can't even replace your color, and then uh, look like a black penguin with a tail on there and everything like that. Man, can't talk. Damn shirt that you're up there choking. You can't even sit to uh, swallow a watermelon seed. <laughs> Excuse me, not, I, I should say watermelon in, in, in your presence. Uh, I know you don't feel good at that. <laughs> uh, especially since you're a black freak. I'm green. Uh, uh, excuse me, please, green. Uh, so but, but then all of, that I'm talking about is here, and there ain't no breeze yet. See, I'm gonna have to talk for days before I get to Greece. 
because they don't exist. I've had a talk for weeks before I get to Jehovah and Adam and Eve. And I could be another year talking and don't get there. And then you're frustrated because God going to beat you up for listening to this pagan boy. <laughs> You see? But yet I'm up there in the hill with you. See? I'm up there in the hill with you looking at that language, Nubian language, which nobody else could now decipher, and they said we had no language. We not only had language, but we had them so old you can't remember them. And that's what this means to us. This this little escapade into yourself. That's what we celebrated. We're not celebrating an external thing. We celebrated our internal things. We are celebrating that which no one sees. We're seeing things within us. We're celebrating that which is within us that make that which is outside of us. We are celebrating our genius. The genius that take the black brother and the black sister to hold each other and kiss each other and feel that inner self which one can explain in physical sense. That's what we celebrated, the mere fact that we were able to come, man and woman, on this continental shores and said, this is not enough to go around, catch a bird, pick a, a plum, a wild plum, we must ourselves make that plum tree grow again at where we want it to grow. We call it agriculture. When other man, any place, won't deal in with that. We are celebrating when we, that people, were able to say, I got to remember the day when it was when I embraced her and make her feel contented and happy. I got to be able to put that day down, and therefore I make a calendar. That's what we're celebrating. We're not just celebrating some failure things and so forth like that. This celebration that I thought of and others like me thought of was a celebration in which we can come together and rejoice with ourselves and in ourselves. Lastly, until we have a discussion, because it's more important than me speaking all the time, uh, discussion, question and answer, and so forth. This celebration involved all of these things you've seen today and will see tomorrow. And I suggest to you, if you have the $150 and can spare it, that you journey unto Abu Simba. I won't tell you about Abu Simba. Of course, those of you who have been there know what it is. You thought you had a jar, that the pyramid jar you. Yes, it jar you, damn it. 14 story building made of stone, no mortar, no nothing like that. Standing up there, one and little stone, not bricks made of mortar, uh, uh, modern straw. Go there and touch it yourself. They ain't got a damn brick of any materials. Solid stone. Won't feel it. So you can go back and tell them it's a lie. Ain't no brick made of no, 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 that pyramid isn't made of any mud or straw. But 48 stories high, at 10 feet to the whole corner, 80 feet tall, the one on Khufu, three and a half city blocks, 640 feet wide by 640 feet long, making it a square at the bottom. That's enough to make any man up. But this is cut out of stone. This isn't blocks of stone put together. This is a man going into the mountains of stone, hewing out of it, Come on. and carving, and for his woman and for himself. Right. Showing you history to stay for eons. <laughs> So that when you come, you will up. Or at 60 foot statute, four of them arranged in such a manner and put in a, 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 an altar built in the inside, so the engineering so perfect that on December and on February each year, the sun will come up and shine its ray directly in the center of the altar, and with all the modern equipment that got in engineering, all the technology of the world today, in 1960, 81, could not put that place back in the proper order when they move it to, to escape the, 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 the um, 
the late, late NASA, they found that it was two degrees off center. And your ancestors, yeah, that black brother, that black engineer, because his mind was at peace, he had sucked on a black woman titty the night before. And she had put him in proper equilibrium. Because <laughs> 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 you got a sister, you got a sister giving the baby problem, and I want to know why the baby is frustrated. The little bastards are frustrated because titty was made to go in his mouth. So that when he grew up to be a master, he's a sucker. <laughs> you got him a problem. You got him a problem in all corners. A milk shortening with, with oh. pain and gas in his guts. No. Got a sweet sister uh, uh, chest for him to lay on and feel comfortable and feel the, 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 the no, heat of his body stimulating his little body. Yes. Comfortable and cooing and, and everything like that, and you talking some darnness to nonsense to the little brother. Uh, 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 I don't want you sucking on me or pulling my titty out of shape. And daddy got he, he got a little grisly uh, uh, bone, not even bone, some gristle in his jaw. Daddy's sucking with a big, big uh, jaw bone. He is putting it up. Get off that damn nonsense. Let's get back. Let's get back to the fact of where we are and keep them young. <laughs> <laughs> we, we can't just come here. We can't just come here and look at the building and go back as we were. No. We gotta go back with a chain. We gotta say, this is our child, children. No damn uh, uh, Jewish gun doctor could tell me that my child ain't supposed to suck on me. Huh? Just because my breasts don't look right in a brassiere or in a certain dress? Hell no. Your child is more important to you than any damn pair of dress. Or oh, any Brazil? You weren't born with no damn Brazil on the first place. <laughs> All right, talk to no, the doctor. We, 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 got, we got to do it. This, this celebration is celebrating ourselves. we celebrating the richness and purity of ourselves. Yes. And you know, still children, wherever you are, if a brother wants to pee for you because you know, some children, let the jackass flow. That's right. A mouthful, an eyeful in a mouthful. <laughs> and if it's a mouthful, that's the jackass fault. <laughs> Don't you be ashamed of putting a towel over the child, smothering the child. Go down the street and you're going to see women after women after women nursing the baby with nothing. Put the child in the baby mouth and having a conversation, <laughs> talking with anybody come by. If you got a sick maniac who's going to stay to watch that woman nursing the child, let the ass stay there. <laughs> 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 Conversation, uh, this little monologue with you. Uh, let us 
got to give some more consideration for our asset. Not as a picture on a wall, but what she mean to us all. What she mean to us in terms of our mother. And teach our little brother as he put his foot, put his foot in her behind and to call her black bitch that he would remember where he passed before he was able to raise his foot to the black bitch. Thank you. I know you've got discussion question and so forth and uh, we will have to make it uh, no more than the next uh, or five. Okay. We'll make it uh, till five thirty at the most. Yes. Will you kindly explain why it is that you suggest that we do not go into the temple in the holy of holies? Oh yes, uh, we we as a no, you are free to enter wherever you desire, but we, out of respect, do not enter the holy of holies for a number of reasons, some of which are the holy of holies was allowed only to the high priest. Uh, there it was where he kept his most sacred paraphernalia belonging to the service and, uh, and other such things. Even the king was not allowed to go into the Holy of Holies without the permission of the chief priest. And the other thing is that the Holy of Holies carried the most sacred of symbols of the vestments and, the, and for the services. And it was respected by all. Uh, just say, if you have an organization and the organization had its symbol, and that symbol was a church, it was a mosque, it was a uh, religious institution, though it may not be used anymore, you will treat it with a sense of reverence. We feel that the same reverence you, you treat a church or a synagogue or a mosque with, you should choose an African temple. I noticed uh, when we were in Isis Temple that, that many of the faces were, uh, it seemed almost systematically, uh, it wasn't just casual and different in each one, it seemed as if the faces had been chipped away, um, just the faces but not the body. And I was curious about that as to what happened because it seemed as if it was a deliberate act. I was just wondering if you could explain It was deliberate and it, uh, in this case it wasn't racial, it was religious. Uh, they didn't want, the early Christians did not want the face of Isis to appear since it is symbolically, uh, it dealt with, they couldn't accept her face and that of Mary as being valid. If you had the chance, if you do, go to uh, Warit, which is also called to the corner, in the, when you go in behind the Holy of Holy, and quite a little courtyard is there going toward what's called uh, the Temple or Palace of Thutmosis the Third. You will see there where the early Christians tried to paint face, the, the concept of the face of Mary and so forth. And if, uh, this is bad enough, but when you go to, to other places, other temples, you see even worse than that, how the early Christians, early Jews, and not only Jews, the early uh, Muslims and others uh, deface uh, many of the temples to deny and to destroy evidence. In, uh, in the case of the Immaculate Conception and so forth, you go to Abydos and Dender and see how they took hatchets and chisels and tried to chop it out. But the thing is that that was deep within, and the more they chop it, the more accentuated they make it. <laughs> <laughs> so that, 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 <laughs> Dead man, you bare face down, boy. Oh, you big old DB is. Yes. <laughs> yes. Well, there's a concept that um, the Egyptians are pagans and the Muslims and the Jews and the Christians are not. Well, a pagan is anybody that don't worship the way you do. So there's no <laughs> big deal to that. Uh, the term is true, widely thrown away. When I hear somebody say, he's a pagan, I say, he, he, he believed different than he did. That's <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> that, that's why he's caught. He's mad because he has the independence of his own view. So the, what does it mean by a pagan? Uh, the, 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 the fact is the people called pagan, the others who called them pagan came and used their institution for churches. Yes. Uh, so if it means that pagan, it means that bad, then don't use it for your uh, concept, religious concept. Go and build your own. Yes, sir. Uh, Mayor, now, how much of the, uh, the walls and fires that we see in the temples are being erased under the guise of restoration? Not much. Uh, they're not erased at all. Sometimes, as you know, as uh, an archaeologist, sometimes what has been done by one culture previously and it starts to go into ruins, at, at many times you have to pin it or shore it up because you can't use the same construction method that was used before. And, and quite often it means plastering or chipping away in order that the uh, plaster may hold and sometimes uh, some other part that they get the face. But uh, I would say uh, from before so that uh, Egypt would have been probably involved in, in such uh, machinations. But from the time of so that when Egypt realized that 40% of its budget is coming from tourism. I could tell you, boy, you mess up with a piece of something and they find, they kill you quicker than you, you're coming to uh, murder. So there's little, little or none of that going on in terms of de just defacing. Uh, when it was almost a crime to, to, for you to be of any religion other than uh, be even Christian or Muslim or so Hebrew here, you couldn't go to visit any of these things. It was considered so hidden that school children couldn't go. Now today, if you talk about a school child not allowed to go to see this, the, the teacher will know you're crazy. Uh, the, you see a priest and you see uh, a man and so forth watching the ancient uh, shrines. Because now it has dollar box and it brings money to the treasury. Hmm. To, to the, so that was the one that started making it trying to face monuments. Uh, Dr. Ben, you know, we've been today to Mendelisi's temple. Uh, besides yourself, there are very few people who deal with that God and his temple, write or speak about it. Um, the guy explained today that the temple was built in the 18th dynasty, uh, begun by Tutmosis III and finished by his son, uh, I'm in the second. Okay. As you've indicated, Mendelisis was Osiris's brother. When in fact did was he really celebrated? Did he did celebration, festivities towards him go back to the early spirit or only in the uh, the new kingdom? Or was there uh, an earlier temple or something? Can you comment on that? There is no evidence that he was celebrated before the 25th dynasty. Uh, that's why he's called a Nubian god, and, and that's a uh, misnomer. He was the god of everybody else, but uh, uh, I, uh, Osiris and, and his brother said Typhon, what, because since one represented bad and one represented, I mean evil, one represented good, uh, the other two brothers, there were two more brothers involved in this story, Set Typhon uh, and, and a, a brother that they said is an unknown brother. They play that very little part. We have the same corollary in um, um, Ham and Japheth and uh, Shem. You hear everything about Ham and Shem, but you never hear anything about Japheth. Uh, Adam and Eve, uh, you had Cain, Abel, and, and Seth. You hear where Cain killed Abel, and nobody talked about Seth. So it's obviously a parallel. Uh, the, the established thing has been said to have this off brother that nobody speaks about, that is continued even into Christianity. So we go back. What to if you said he was celebrated in the twenty fifth dynasty, the, the uh, Ethiopian dynasty? Why does um, the dynasty. Why, why does um, what part did uh, Moses and Amenhotep? Because Amenhotep's cartouche is on. Uh, in the facade of the, uh, of the temple. What role did they play? Because, I mean, Hotep was a pharaoh, but uh, I mean, the 
kadush was the god, and so that the god wouldn't have a kadush. Yes. Whereas the pharaoh would have a kadush, and uh, others who came uh, removed the name of Menlus constantly, uh, since a lot of the people who came did not when when I conceived that he should even be honored as a god. And when the Nubians gave him up, when the Nubians were conquered by the cops, bringing into them Christianity after Christianity had come into being, and they captured the, 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 the worship of a Mendelus, they murdered them, and who did they murder uh, was uh, forced to recognize the incoming God. That was changed uh, from the Roman times. That was changed, and when the, um, the Muslims conquered the Nubians, they changed them from Christians to uh, Muslims. So everybody coming and come to the New Year, change them from one thing to the next to the next, and uh, as a result, they lost the, the concept of the worship of the old God. Now, one question. Uh, could you tell us about uh, Napoleon and this uh, messing up the, the, the nose of the Sphinx in uh, Cairo? I don't think it was particularly the nose. He messed up the face. The face. And okay. just happened that they kind of hit the nose. It could have been the lips, so it could have been uh, he was just disgusted, uh, and I'm 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 drawing my information from uh, Count Siak Volney, who was there and wrote about it. He was uh, Volney and Denon, uh, and all of them were here with Napoleon at the same time trying to conquer Egypt, and he reported that in disgust, uh, Napoleon in his disgust for not being unable to uh, conquer the people, uh, tore blew off the face of this thing, thing as a means of protest, disgust of it. So I'm following them since I wasn't here. Uh, the the, the one is a uh, report on it. And there is the, a report of it by Baron Dinan, uh, who, who um, actually did the drawing of the first uh, person pencil drawing of the Sphinx. Of Giza. What is called the Sphinx of Giza is in fact the statue of God Hurakti, Rahurakti, or Yeah, would you comment on the, the extent that uh, Asaru and Eru were either mythological figures or real figures who were deified? From the evidence there, it seems to have been like the Jesus figure, real human being, uh, who were deified. Uh, just like Inhotep was deified mm -hmm. and became one of the gods, the god of medicine. Mm -hmm. uh, they, they were men who lived and their lives were so unusual mm -hmm. to the average person that other men consider them deities, uh, beyond men. A follow-up question to that. I'd also read something to the fact that uh, Horus was at one time a Kushite king uh, before becoming you know, a, a Kemite king and therefore de deified and later worshipped in Kemet. I have no problem with that because we know that uh, there are three dynastic gods and, and goddesses and they were worshipped all along the Nile. For instance, uh, Bess was the god of the Nile before Happy. Happy became the god of the Nile in the third dynasty, whereas Bess was pre-dynastic. In other words, what I'm trying to do is to, to see to what extent uh, many of the cultural features Kings, goddesses, kings, etc., that were in Egypt were pre existed in Kush. Oh, and not only Kush, mm -hmm. but before. The, 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 the mm -hmm. Hutu and the, and the um, Twa. Twa are older than the Ethiopians. And okay. There's no evidence <laughs> Ethiopia started that. Ethiopia is a continuation of it. Okay. There is more evidence that uh, what we call civilization, they started around yeah. Zaire, uh, north. north Northwest Ghana, or in Northwest uh, Congo, than any other place. Okay. And in our diggings, we find more uh, skeleton remains in that area than we do in any place else. They, the more old one. Uh, the oldest one that we know of is in Ethiopia, of course, and that's a uh, dead nest, which we call Lucy, 3.2 uh, million years old. Concerned about that because it seems like when there's great things going on, there's plenty to eat. Uh, was this happening?
I think that this one would be good. I, I don't think we we'll work too much this kind of hard work yeah, when they want to eat. <laughs> uh, I, I think it was, but there come a time when the population started to go, and men found the need for controlled vegetation, and therefore agriculture was born out of that. Uh, it's been quite a long time that the Nile, uh, that there's been uh, uh, desert here. The desert just didn't just come, didn't come yesterday because the ancients spoke of the desert. Uh, so it means it was here. So it must have been as the population grew and men did not uh, move as much as it did before, it became less mobile, uh, the need for agriculture came. As the need for agriculture came, the need for certain tools ar arise among men, like all other means for communicating other than in stone, uh, some means by which men could travel with easily or, or, or man could send some object to another man where he can tell what he's saying uh, from um, visual uh, presentation. So all of these different needs, I think I said necessity is the mother of creation or invention. And so yes, I, I think that the time, well, uh, yes, because the, it is it's shown where the uh, pharaohs led the villain of their ancient uh, tombs and temples, okay. whereas they didn't build a magnificent palaces, that they, they lived more to preserve their uh, body, their cat, for the next world, for the, they, they, they believed so much in the other world. Mm -hmm. A world beyond this with, with, with greater longevity, that they spend more time building all of the inundation period, when the flood came, they worked, they did. The farmers who had no work then to do was to build these uh, uh, colossus uh, in towards their deity. I have one other question for this one. Uh, are we allowed to pick up stones from around the pyramids and take them back to? Oh, yes, as long as you don't take up a big one. <laughs> <laughs> would, you, uh, would you comment, please, on the Exodus story, uh, the reality of it versus the mythological aspects of it in terms of the Hebrews? Going across the Red Seas and all the other uh, mythological aspects of that. That, uh, the, 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 that Exodus story has been long dispelled by anybody rational. Uh, <laughs> okay. If you want to be more to the Hebrew. Well, uh, even the Jewish scholars are now saying, the Jewish theologians are now saying, it's part of the mythology of Judaism and, okay. and uh, all. Uh, it was, it, it, there was a conference in Canada, I think it was, uh, I retired three years ago from Corner, so it was three years ago, and uh, the most of the world's quote unquote archaeological uh, scholars, religious archaeological scholars have agreed that the Exodus story was a myth. And some of it was from Gilgamesh, some of it was from, uh, even uh, Horus here had, uh, the, the part of Moses, for example, and being put in a Horus basket comes exactly from the birth of Horus, whose mother put him in the same night in a um, papyrus basket. Uh, the story of Gilgamesh uh, of uh, Persia is uh, right down the line of Moses. That these stories happened before Moses, so they, they were kind of stories that predated Moses by many many years. And uh, the Exodus number one, if following the Torah, the, the five books of Moses, and in particular the second book, if the Jews had uh, left Egypt uh, traveling due east, that mean no deviation. They would be in Arabia, not in Sinai. I mean, somebody was poor in geography. And, uh, uh, and then uh, we got to stop and do some thinking. I noticed that the United States of God could do anything. Sure, could do anything, but that don't mean did anything. Uh, if you pour out the water out of the Red Sea, you got a tremendous hole. <laughs> precipice on each side of that <laughs> hole. You mean to tell me all the Jews, including a one-year-old born, a one-day born, at 200 years old, they say that's some hole in that. <laughs> Walk down the side of that cliff, right out up the other side. <laughs> I mean, like a like a, a platypus and walk up against with the uh, foot that stuck to the stone there and don't slip down and went across the hole the, 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 on the other side. And why the pharaohs, strong fighting men, all of them die. <laughs> I mean, you can believe what you want. You're entitled to that. Uh, I, I, I grant that I 
want them, even to give their permission. But a little bit of common sense should take over. They call it mother weight. <laughs> mother. I wish we had stayed with mother weight. We got so sophisticated, they brilliant, and we got dumber in the process. And we believe any damn thing that people tell us, just so we could sit and lazy behind and don't do any thinking. It really just feels comfortable because it allows us not to do any thinking. You know, tell us anything. And the more impossible it sounds, the better it is to believe. <laughs> If you use your brain, you say, do you believe in God? What I gotta do with using my brain? Huh? You think I gotta believe in God or something sound crazy? Like I remember when I was in the hospital, I had the stroke. And um, I was lying down there and uh, thanks Dr. Lewis for that. He's the one carrying me over there. Yeah, very nice. And I'm lying down there after Dr. Lewis had rushed me over to the hospital. And an, an emergency ward, there was a sister, a, a doctor, a sister. And the, she had done hooked me up to the thing that looked like spaghetti all over the place. And I was kind of bad when she said, well, you're going to save this one. Got no brain damage. Well, you know, I, I, I was happy about that. And the sister was getting ready to give me a needle. She didn't know by that time, she didn't need to give me no needle. The sister needle uh, bent over me like that too. Uh, I to oh Lord. Watch out. She could have saved the injection. <laughs> I perked up immediately. I started feeling the electric that I had to move my arm. Two days later, and the sister used to come up every day to see me, and I look at the sister, and Lord knows, his wonders to perform. I was waiting the Lord to perform wonder. Hey, this guy, I'm watching the sister, hey, sticking me with, I hate needles. The sister sticking me with a needle right through, going for my arm, right down my side, through my body, and I am feeling nothing. And he's coming out to me. Do you want me to pray to the Lord? No. <laughs> <laughs> so what, he, what he thought, he go say to the Lord for me. <laughs> All he could say to the Lord for me was, can I have a Lord? What did he say for me? As I walked at that time, <laughs> I could have got up right then, put on my clothes and go home. I was better. That's just the whole. <laughs> My status of digging now, I can show you, right behind it is a pile of dirt. <laughs> Somebody did me in again, and I bring a, a, a long trailer truck of dirt and up, just throw it on my digging. Uh, they said that they could build some kind of walk around there. <laughs> it's been the three months now, the walk is in there, but the dirt is still there. So my thing is that it, the dirt that I took off are, are all bad plus. So I dig again, some of You can't keep a good digger down there. <laughs> <laughs> Can you give us some more background of Moses since Christian would have some problems after reading and hearing you and looking at Genesis. Well, so just assuming that there was a Moses, and then we have such a, a lot of mythology about it, let's assume there was a Moses for the sake of discussion. Number one, we, we, we know if there was a Moses, he's an Egyptian, therefore an African. Because even the Hebrew Torah said, he was born in the city of, of uh, uh, Goshen in Egypt, made in the Egyptian. He looked like any other, in order for the Pharaoh's daughter to conceal this boy, and the Pharaoh was looking to kill, kill all the Hebrew children, obviously all the Hebrew children that did the boy looked like the uh, Egyptian children. All right. <laughs> so he grows up in the, in, among the, uh, uh, first, uh, first of all, you gotta stop and ask yourselves, is it logical that uh, your daughter, the Pharaoh's daughter, would bring a child, a boy child, at a time when they're killing boy children, 
in the palace to stay and bring up as a royal child, and no questions asked. Uh, and another thing to, to look in is that he grows up until he's 85 years old. He, he doesn't recognize his Hebrew all through the first 85 years. He goes to school. What kind of school he go to? The, the Bible tells us what? He was born in the way of the Egyptian priest. That means now he's a priest. In the Egyptian system, who is the god that the Egyptian, or gods and goddesses that the Egyptian worship? What are some of the things that the Egyptian learn? We, we got to go now to the, to the uh, uh, admonition to goddess Ma'at. Uh, Hail Ma'at, I have not killed man or woman. Hail Ma'at, I have not spoken ill of my mother or my father. And so on and so on. These are the things that Ma Ma uh, Moses learned. 42 laws, 10 of which you now call the Ten Commandments. So we know the source of the Ten Commandments isn't Moses. The source is at least Ma'at, and before Ma'at, the, um, um, the, so the um, where it is in the Osirian drama of the, um, of the Book of the Dead. So we, we took, we look at those things, and those things, if we look at that, Moses, there's nothing unique about Moses. He is a soul brother of Egypt. His birthplace is there. He learned from there everything about him. Show him as an Egyptian young man. Now, if we're talking about you, the Western concept of race, color, and religion, uh, they, we, we, we got to take again the, the Jewish book, the Bible, the Korah, the Old Testament. It says that Moses had an, uh, was showing uh, uh, Jehovah God some lip. And Jehovah said, no, look, man, cut that damn shit out. I'm, I'm your boss. You know, you know Jesus, Jehovah didn't talk that way. Why not? He spoke the language of the people, you said. And now, you know the language of the people, you got nothing left. He's a blind boy. That's Shakespeare and Bacon. So that's England. We talked long before there was in England. But we talked about give him some skin. Stop me. Huh? Well, you ain't gonna sell it, but he spoke the language of people. And they want to crack at the end of time. He talked about the language of people. You want to prove the language of people? And the Lord gonna show Moses some bad ass terms. He said, Moses, I like that shit you're talking to me. I'll take that in, boy. <laughs> See, you already you you mad, man. Lord talk like that. Lord talk good language. <laughs> <laughs> Proper English. <laughs> like James, the murderer. <laughs> now, and the Lord said, Moses, I'm not sure how bad I am, man. <laughs> Since you won't believe them brothers telling you how bad. Now, put your hand in your bosom. Stick it in there, boy. <laughs> I'm sure you're bad. I was some bad ass with that. <laughs> and the law, and lo and behold, now we're going to Shakespeare. Lo and behold. <laughs> lo and behold. And Moses put it down his bosom and pulled it out. And it turned white. 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 Mm. Now, stop. <laughs> if it was white when he put it in there. <laughs> 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 the Lord would have been jiving. <laughs> and the Lord don't jive. It was some other color than what. No, it didn't say it was technicolor. It was Jesse color rainbow. <laughs> okay, so one thing we know that Moses wasn't. Fine. Okay. Now, to prove you how bad the Lord really is, my dear God, Miriam going to give the Lord some lip down. That's Moses' sister. It's a bad family, boy. <laughs> <laughs> One is a murderer. Mm -hmm. The brother Aaron Steve from the treasury. <laughs> we don't we don't know very a job. <laughs> we gotta we gotta assume that this is all right. Of course. And Miriam <laughs> says, "What the hell, Moses? You gonna marry the girl from Ethiopia? And you got a bunch of these girls down here in Egypt, and you gonna marry them?" But Moses said, "Don't talk, don't talk." I, I like him nothing but holy holes. <laughs> right? He married the, high, the daughter of a high priest of what? Media. The daughter of the, he married five high priest daughters. Mm -hmm. You can't get more holy than that. <laughs> <laughs> and now he's going to marry the daughter of the high priest of Ethiopia, right? Mm -hmm. And the Lord didn't like Miriam. Miriam, did they put you in charge? <laughs> no, Lord, but I don't like this. How the hell do you don't like this? I am boss here. I put you, your brother in charge, not you. For that, I won't show you. I'm um, here and say, Lord, don't do it to her. Uh, Moses said, she knows what she said. She don't give her. <laughs> and, and so he said, no, I'm going to do it just this one time. 
and he turned her white, white with leprosy. No, I mean, I didn't write, I didn't read your book, no. I didn't write your book. I'm, I'm reading, you like white books, and I'm reading your white book. You understand? So if you're mad, don't be mad with me. You want to mail them crackers for Europe. You understand? And they said that the law equally turned her white. Right. Now let me see what kind of people there are in Africa that she could have possibly been that turned from. There is nigger, uh, jigaboo, uh, <laughs> sapu. <laughs> they all tell us to be black. <laughs> so, you know, they talk from, from African to cracker. I mean, to pit on See, I, I don't, I mean, I'm having fun with this, and I hope you have having fun. I know some of you are, are scared that the Lord will to drop the seed in there. <laughs> but in celebrating, this is the festival, and we're celebrating what others try to take from us. And we have to be able to look at it in candor to understand what things they've done to what we taught, and to take it away from us. And then we give it back and we accept it. Yes. yes. Sister. Can you elaborate on the book of inclusion, please? The book of inclusion? The curriculum. I can't elaborate because I don't know enough. As you know, I've, I've left out. Nobody calls me and speaks with me anything about the book of the, of the curriculum. I don't know, uh, Professor Clark, when he speaks to you, probably could ask a question again, because he have had some contact with them and on occasion have spoken to them, but as you know, they I have not been included in any discussion in the curriculum of inclusion. Most of the scholars there don't think that my English and my and well, I've got, behavior I think it's tough yeah, the, the Atlanta Conference, I we like it. And, uh, we like it, don't worry. Because I, I feel I am a person of the street. I can't polish myself good enough to speak the proper English and stand in shit without responding in life to be included in it. So I don't know enough about TD. Remember, things like that are not changed in public. It's in the committees and at the restaurants and so forth where one eat and drink, where the compromises are made. Mm. So I am <laughs> not, uh, uh, you see, you can't be bad in another culture with acceptance. Mm -hmm. You may appear so at the pleasure of the master, but when you're bad, you, they go fight you, mm -hmm. and you're gonna wind up in hospitals, you may be dead, mm -hmm. and you're gonna have all kind of pressure. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh yes, uh, the pressure is mild. As soon as this thing gets, it's critical now because it's international and it didn't start there, but it's going to get worse. And it begins. When you find that you, when they deal enough with the heart soul of America, and you must deal with the very heart of America, it's brain cells hmm. when you deal with American education hmm. because you're dealing with a whole Propaganda. mind hmm. of white America. Oh. I think, I hope Dr. Brindis will touch that uh, when she deals with her psych psychiatric lecture. And by the way, I, I must say at this moment, I'm going to ask Dr. Uh, or Dr. Sun back there uh, to stand again. She is, was a retired head of the uh, uh, college in, uh, is it, um, is it, uh, my good doctor right there, is it Sitnar or what the school, uh, forgive me, as much as you've invited me there, I can't remember which school. Dr. Nozot. <laughs> she, she's looking at somebody.